Hello, welcome to the Warren Christmas Village channel. If this is your first time here, then welcome to the shenanigans. And if you're back for more, then we must be doing something right. Today, I'm gonna to take a piece of scrap foam that I have uh, lying around, and I'm gonna basically show you how to make this intricate stonework or brickwork for your tabletop games, like D&D, Dungeons and Dragons, Warhammer, Frostgrave, Ghost Archipelago, etc. Uh, we're going to be using, today I'm going to be using the uh, Pinpoint Sharpie for my tool. And this piece was inspired by the terrain that I purchased at the pet shop. As you can see, here are the bricks that are the, end, the I guess, bricks or stonework at the base of the columns. I basically carried that through in my design. And I'm going to show you how to make this today. The video is broken down into a couple parts. The first part, I talk about the joys and, and extol the virtues of modular tabletop terrain for your games like D&D, Warhammer, Frostgrave, etc. I think it just opens up the most possibilities and varieties for your scenarios. Then the second part, I'm going to show you how to make, if you don't want to spend any kind of money on this kind of column, I show you how to make an affordable column style out of uh, cardboard and uh, in the insert of a paper towel holder. The, la the third last part is about uh, how to actually carve these out. There's about 15 minutes of me just carving it out and talking about different ways to do that and using different tools. And then of course we have the cat supervisor Preston decided to get in on the act and he does a little modeling session. So stay tuned, I hope you find something interesting to learn and have a good one. So this was the piece that I got at the aquarium shop. It was $3.79 and they were buy two, get one free. So I bought two of these for about eight bucks plus tax and I got this one for free. And I bought these before. I really love these brickwork here. And I think they're really nicely painted and could uh, do well on their own. Like you don't even really have to repaint these. So uh, there was a piece at the shop that I saw that was about 45, 50 bucks. And uh, I decided to come home and recreate the look of it. And here's a picture of that aquarium ornament. We're going to recreate this look for a lot less. It's it was, My piece isn't going to be as tall with all that drama, but it'll have a really cool base, I think. So I decided to match up these bricks by carving into a piece of scrap XPS foam. So this piece of terrain is going to run me, I don't know, about nine bucks by the time plus craft plus some craft supplies and that'll that's how it's gonna look As you can see I left these edges at a nice 45 degree angle but over here I beveled it with my uh, foam cutter tool and I beveled these edges as well which I think gives a really cool effect as you can see the beveled edges it makes the bricks a little more wonky and wobbly as you can see here and then I left this blank because I'm gonna show you guys how I do it using uh, just a Sharpie. I've been using just a Sharpie, but you can, and a toothpick, but you can use all these tools over here, any and all, to get this brickwork effect on the XPS foam. One thing I wish I had done is I wish I had put this on the base because it kind of interferes a little bit with my brickwork. I'm also gonna do this part up here, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to do like maybe a stecco effect, like maybe this part's still intact, but this is all, has all rotted off through the, the years. And then I was inspired afterwards to take a piece of, another piece of scrap and make some stairs. These are more in, a, in scale. I decided this time to go form over function. Normally I go with a one inch base for my stairs, but they kind of look awkward. And with these bricks, I, I didn't think it would look right. So I did smaller stairs. The minis will not be able to stand on them by themselves, but I think it'll look good. And also I was going a little nutty trying to figure out where I wanted to place the stairs because ideally, oh, these haven't been attached, sorry about that. Ideally, I think the stairs look great here, going this way, or, get a little sassy with it and do a sideways stairs to go up to the top. But I didn't want to commit, so I decided to leave this loose as a modular piece. And then I also got inspired to make another random, just another random scrap. And as you can see, it's wonky, but I think that's great because um, in older buildings, a lot of times the edges get wonky and the buildings will curve like that. So, uh, I mean, not even, I've seen that with buildings that aren't even 100, 100 and something years old. So I thought I would do another series of brickwork on this random modular bit and then take another terrain piece that I got at the aquarium shop. And look, I can just build up 
something that looks a lot more interesting to play on in a game like Frostgrave or Go Ghost Archipelago. Now look how look how fun of a train piece that is. And this was part of the buy two get one free. So technically I didn't pay for this. I mean you could figure I worked it into the budget or whatever. But this whole bit of terrain is a nine dollar piece of terrain. That's not bad. And look at how big of the surface area it covers. Each of these is an inch. Each of these squares is an inch for my European friends. So that's a really nice big chunk of terrain. Okay, so I decided to rearrange the terrain so everyone can get a better look at how large this piece is. I think this is 14 and a half inches. This just going in this going in this direction, 14 and a half inches. And then if we turned it and measured it this way, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about 10 inches this way. So that's a really hefty chunk of terrain. It's nice, it has some height to it. It has nice three dimensionality. You can run upstairs and not lose your movement in a game like Frostgrave. I think that's a really sharp piece of terrain. From some scraps and a trip to the aquarium shop. Now let's say you did not want to make these columns because maybe you don't have a pet, uh oh, sorry, that's the, the supervisor. Preston's here. So uh, maybe you didn't want like these columns, maybe they're too thin, whatever. You can also make your own with a piece of cardboard. Here's an alternative method instead of using store-bought materials. Take some upcycled items like the inside of a paper towel holder, that piece of cardboard, and another sheet of cardboard. Remove the one layer of the cardboard and that'll leave these ridges. So then you just clean up the ridges a little bit and wrap that around the, the width and circumference of the paper towel bit that you have. And this will create a nice round shape for a column. The ridges of the cardboard look great for a big size column. Now on this piece, you do have to put a top and a bottom to create more of a look, but there you go. There's a quick, fast, cheap, and easy cardboard column. It's not as detailed as this, but um, they work. They work nice as columns, and they're really affordable. So there you go. And there's some Mr. Preston cat, there's some cat butt <laughs> for scale. <laughs> I just wanted to, once again, show and reinforce my love of modular terrain, because all of this can easily be disassembled or rearranged however you want to see fit. So there you go, all these little pieces. I think I'm going to try and attach these to the foam, which is going to be really tricky, because this is a different kind of material that the glue needed to, use, to attach something to this would probably melt the foam. So I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that. I thought about putting a screw in there and then screwing it into the train, but I, these fall over really easy, which is why I kind of wanna attach them to the piece of the base. There you go, there's your little, little piece of terrain for you. We are at the workstation and I wanted to show everyone how I make these little bricks. I have a, if you can see on this one, I really want to go big with them on the squares. As you can see on this one, I really want to go big on them, but um, this doesn't really have a lot of the big bricks. So this one's not really going to match up so well. But I, I, I wanted to do something a little more flagstone-ish, I guess you could call it. But on this one, um, they're all ruined, and if you can see on this, there's there are spots where the bricks are just gone entirely, which I really love. I love ruins, I love entropy and things like that. So um, on this one, as you can see, I kind of mimicked that in certain spots. Now keep in mind, everywhere where the black is, is going to be everything's going to be painted on so this is going to look a little different when painted this is more um it's probably not going to be as as finely detailed but it'll be pretty close so what i do for this is i take a lovely pinpoint sharpie which sharpie is one of my favorite tools in the universe uh, this is not sponsored but if sharpie wants to send me some products i will gladly accept the offering and here is the fine point I'm trying to get that in the camera for you you can see the fine point detail 
Now what I like to do is I just like to take a fingernail and just t lightly draw it, sketch in where this is going to go. I don't go too deep with my fingernail. And this is an incidental scratch because once I put in my sealant and my uh, acrylic paint combination, it will that will all be gone so as you, there you go we can kind of we can see it right there see that's where I just took my fingernail and scratched across okay and then the next step is to just take and this is gonna be tricky it's gonna be tricky to film I'm not really sure how I'm gonna film this but let's see if that works okay so then I just take and I sketch in roughly where I where I want the bricks to go and then create a brick of whatever size I want and then on this corner, the nice trick to go on the corner is to carry it over. This creates a nice 3D effect to it. Okay, and then let's say I'm gonna draw my next brick right in here. And I'm not going very deep with these initial cuts. I'm just going really light because I may change my mind. Okay, so what I'm gonna do just to show you all what I did is I'm gonna draw in these. These are the lines that I drew in with my fingernail. I normally don't draw those in, but I'm drawing these in for the camera so you can see what's going on because I draw outside the lines. So let's say I want a bigger brick. Go like that. Okay. And then we'll draw another one here. And then let's just draw some random designs. Now on this technique that I'm doing today, there really is no rhyme or reason how this is working. I just want the random effect. And even though something is drawn in, it may change. For instance, getting these bits right out here, things like this, these carved in sections, which mimics that. So this is not going to look the same. So you, get a, you can kind of see a rough idea of where this is going with it. Um, and then what I do next is I take, it's going to be hard to film. So then I just take my Sharpie and I carve it in like that. And then go in straight with it sometimes. Another technique is to take it like a sewing machine and to just go up and down and carve it in that way. A sewing machine is a, a needle goes up and down like this, so it's a the technique is a like that. You can make the noise if you want. So here I am carving out what is known as the negative space. This is the spot where when the building was first constructed the mortar would have been but since we're making old ruins you know older buildings if it doesn't have tuck pointing over time the mortar will wear out and you get all sorts of interesting effects with the architecture okay now see we're coming down here on this corner here so what I like to do this is the bottom oh no I'm sorry this is the top so I like to carve in deep and get a nice 3D effect here. If you look closely, that is creating a nice 3D effect on, uh, to give it an effect of a brick, like a brick actually exists there. It's all just an illusion. It's like doing drag. It's all an illusion. Okay, and then take that a technique, and once again, I'm doing a sewing machine style. Let's see if I can this will help with the video. So see how I just go up and down and I follow the lines. And once again, these are ruins. They are not supposed to be perfect, which is what I love about making things like this, is you can make huge mistakes. So there, just carve out a chunk. See how I just carved out that brick? Because that happens with entropy. Just that it's all carved out. That's gonna look beautiful with some uh, washing. So here, I didn't even draw a line and I'm just gonna make a bra, a bla, a bra, ugh. A block and then we'll do another one here and just carve stuff out I love the sharpie because it's got that nice fine tip there now this will create a little bit of a mess with little bits of your XPS foam so just keep that in mind you're gonna have to sweep that up a little later Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to another tool that I like to use sometimes, which is the toothpick. Sometimes it's not so super smooth here, and the toothpick 
really allows you to get in here and clean things up a little bit. And also, if you want to dig in deep, so let's say I want to have a deep ridge right here, the toothpick allows you just to get in there real deep. And spots up here, like on the top, to make this look more three-dimensional, just get in there with your toothpick and carve out that excess. Those are, a lot of those bits in there are the little loose bits that just are kind of barely stuck on there. Um, I find the toothpick does a really good job of getting in there and getting them out because it has that sharp tip to it. So here, I'm just gonna gent gently carve this out because I don't want this to be uh, destroyed. I wanna keep this detail here. As this is getting to the top, I wanna leave this detail here to give a nice uh, 3D effect so people look at this and be like, oh my God, that's not, that's not what I thought it was. Okay. Just carve that out for us, you can see. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna carve a brick using the toothpick so you can see what, what's going on. The toothpick has the, the, the shape gets thicker. So it's a, I, th I find them a little trickier to use to work with. But once again, I'm just doing that same motion up and down like a sewing machine needle. And then pulling a little bit of pressure to carve it out. That brick. So there you go, there's one right there. I'll do this one right here. And on this one, I'm gonna go big. Okay, that's a big block. And then I carve down the middle to break that into two blocks, which can be a little tricky because sometimes that, that one of those uh, shapes get a little weird or a little funky looking or it uh, breaks off. But see how I did that right there? This brick 